Hello, this is Julian speaking here. I hope you can hear me well. We will wait for another minute since there are still people joining the webinar and then uh, I will start the presentation. Okay, welcome everybody to this webinar. My name is Julian. I'm the CSO of Saitina and I'm really excited to host the third webinar of our Selling Saitina webinar series that we have in April. In the two previous sessions, we talked about setting up efficient seller and development workflows and about the isolation and cultivation of microbial cells from gut microbiota samples. Now I'm super excited to present you another workflow a workflow for efficiently generating single cell RNA sequencing libraries. So thank you already for joining. Um, the presentation will last about 30 minutes and then we will have some time to address questions. You can submit questions throughout the webinar um, via the go to webinar plug Plugin um, by if you click on the red arrow here, you can access further options. Please note that everybody in the audience is muted, but using the text box down here, um, you can submit questions throughout the presentation. Um, we will then address them afterwards. So please, please feel free to ask questions whenever they come up. We also uploaded some um, brochures in the handout section that you can download. Before I start, let me briefly introduce who we are and what we are doing as a company. Since last year, Saitina is part of the Selling Corporation. Selling is a young company that has grown rapidly over the last years. Um, Selling was founded in 2016 and now we are present in over 60 countries. We have offices all around the globe to develop new products for the life sciences and also to support our customers. Our product portfolio covers a number of different areas within the life sciences. We provide tools for bioprinting, um, for liquid handling and for single cell handling, single cell analysis and as well as imaging. Today I will present the workflow where we use the IDOT low volume dispenser and the F site for single cell dispensing. At Saitina, we develop instruments for automated isolation of single living cells since 2014. All our instruments are capable of label-free isolation of cells and come with image-based cell detection. It started all with um, the SCP that you can see here, <clears throat> which was launched in 2015. In 2018, we launched the x site series, where we have the f site and the c site for the isolation of mammalian cells and the B-side, which comes with a higher resolution optical detection system for isolating microbial cells such as bacteria. Together with the company Dispendix, which is also part of the selling family, we can now also offer a highly flexible low volume dispenser, the IDOT. In fact, most of the world's largest pharma companies are already using our technology to isolate cells for either generating cell lines or analyzing single cells. In addition, we have um, instruments at several well-known academic labs. Let me briefly touch upon the major uh, main applications of workflows our customers address with our instruments. Our te technology is very established in cell line development. Uh, which typically refers to genetic engineering, cloning and expansion of a mammalian host cell line for the production of 
therapeutic proteins, which is a highly regulated process. Another exciting application is the cultivation of single bacteria isolated from mixed microbiome samples, for example, to study gut microbiota. And the third application is single cell analysis and in particular single cell genome and transcriptome sequencing. This is the application we want to um, address today in this session. I will first provide a brief introduction to full-length single cell RNA sequencing. For those of you that are not yet familiar with this technique, I will then introduce you to our technologies for single cell isolation and for low volume liquid handling. And finally, I will present a workflow for efficient preparation of single cell RNA-seq libraries at significantly reduced reaction volumes. Single cell RNA sequencing is currently the most widely used um, single cell omics assay. And one reason for that increased popularity over the let's say five years are technological improvements in chemistries and microfluidics and also in data analysis, but also the fact that single cell transcriptome analysis is a powerful tool to look at heterogeneous samples in much more detail as it was possible before. As depicted here, it often starts with a complex sample, for example, a, a, a human tissue sample. Cells need to be first brought into suspension before they can be isolated for subsequent amplification and sequencing of transcripts present in single cells. After sequencing, the reads obtained need to be mapped to a reference genome to compute a count table as it is depicted here. And in addition, typically several filtering and normalization steps are applied to improve the data quality. Based on this count table, we can then look at differential gene expression and cluster cells based on their expression patterns. Common applications of single cell RNA sequencing include the identification or characterization of cell types within heterogeneous samples or tissues, Using full-length transcript sequencing, we can also look at differential splicing in single cells at allele-specific expression, and it allows us also to investigate processes that are time or cell cycle dependent. The power of single cell RNA-seq along with increased robustness of the methods already contributed tremendously to a better understanding in a variety of different disciplines including developmental biology, oncology, as, as well as immunology. But we also see that these methods are now being picked up by the pharmaceutical industry as an additional tool for developing new therapies and drugs. One very important aspect of precise single cell analysis is a robust workflow for generating sequencing libraries. It's widely accepted that automation increases robustness and reproducibility since it reduces operator bias. Finally, it's important to set up cost-effective workflows since the number of cells to be analyzed is typically way higher than, than, it, uh, than the number of samples for any bulk sequencing experiments. And in addition, the reagents needed to generate NGS libraries from such minute amounts of target molecules can be quite expensive. Considering these prerequisites, we have decided to offer an affordable and open platform based on proven technologies for single cell isolation and liquid handling. Before I discuss some of the data that you can get from this workflow, I want to provide a few more details on the two instruments. Here you see the F side, our instrument for label free and fluorescent based isolation of mammalian cells. It's a benchtop instrument that is very easy to operate compared to other technologies, such as, for example, flow cytometry. If we zoom into the printhead here, you can see the nozzle of our disposable dispensing cartridge. We use an optical detection system, which is somewhat similar to a bright field microscope, to detect the cells in the nozzle of our dispensing cartridges. In addition, the f side comes with a laser and an additional camera that allows us to sort cells based on fluorescent markers. 
Only those droplets that contain a cell with the right properties are then deposited onto the target substrate. Empty droplets or droplets that contain multiple cells are removed with a vacuum suction that is positioned below the dispenser. This allows us to rapidly dispense droplets with single cell into well plates, um, as I will show uh, in the short video that I will start now. There's also an image of a disposable dispensing cartridge. So the video shows the C side, um, which is very similar in operation uh, as the F side. You start with um, opening the dispenser, pipetting your sample into a fresh uh, cartridge, attach it to the instrument um, with two screws, and then we have a pipette tip that allows to mix the cells in the reservoir to prevent set them from sedimenting. You then load your well plate, for single cell RNA sequencing, that would be a PCR well plate pre-filled with lice buffer. You set up your workflow in the software and start the run. The dispenser will then go from well to well and dispense a single droplet with a single cell into every well. And after a few minutes, you end up with a plate um, full of, of single cells and can proceed with, for example, the lysis step or um, um, incubation for cultivating the cells. All our instruments for single cell dispensing operate with sterilized single-use cartridges that are individually backed. In fact, the cartridge is the only part that gets into contact with the sample, which is ideal for clinical samples. This means there's no risk for cross-contamination and no cleaning procedures required, and you can process sample volumes starting from 5 microliters. Recently, we have equipped the CDF side with a module for automated dispenser offset compensation. This is a system that measures the droplet impact position prior um, the wells are addressed to make sure the droplets are deposited into the center of the conical PCR wells without the need for manual alignment. This is crucial, especially if you look into lyses in very small amounts of liquid volume. With 200 picoliters, <clears throat> the droplets produced by our systems are very small to not impact the biochemistry of scaled-down reactions, and 96 cells are typically dispensed within three to five minutes. For each cell that is dispensed, several images are stored to the hard drive to document the cell isolation process. Um, Here is one such an example um, of such an image series. You see the cell approaching the nozzle. You see the cell in the nozzle of the dispensing cartridge, another image showing the, the image processing overlay, and a final image which shows the empty nozzle after the cell has been dispensed. Once the fluorescent laser on the F side is switched on, additional images um, from the fluorescent channel are stored along with these bright field images. Let me show you now a quick video um, that highlights how the software of our systems looks like. You would always start with selecting the plate type. In this case, it's a 96 well plate. Enter a plate ID or name and then um, we can lay out the experiment and define which cells we want to sort for. In this case, it's um, bright field sorting where we define the size range and the, the roundness range of the cells we want, we want to address. We can also um, increase the numbers of single cells as, uh, for example, for positive controls. The system also allows us to deposit empty droplets as a negative control. And then we can start the run. The, the software lets us confirm that we set up everything in the right way. And now in the upper right corner, you see a live view of the, of the nozzle camera that shows how the cells um, approach the nozzle 
and how they are detected. Each time the system pauses, a single cell was dispensed into a well, as you can see by the check marks that occur here on, on the well plate. And each time the cell is dispensed, a series of Im images is stored to the hard drive. This dot plot here on the right uh, corner really uh, helps to see what how you how your sample looks like, how large your cells are, which population you want to target. Um, if you switch on the laser for the F side, you can also look at fluorescent intensity here to, to have a, another parameter for sorting the cells. <clears throat> now let me introduce you to the IDOT which is a benchtop instrument for low volume reagent dispensing. The IDOT technology allows to generate droplets using a well-controlled pressure pulse that is applied to a liquid well with a small hole on the bottom. The IDOT comes with eight such individual controlled pressure channels, which can generate droplets with volumes between eight and 50 nanoliters. Volumes in the microliter range can be easily addressed given that the droplets can be generated with frequencies of 100 hertz. Something that really sets the IDOT apart from other low volume liquid handlers is the disposable source well plate, which holds up to 96 different reagents. It basically looks like a normal 96 well plate that can be filled with standard pipettes, multi channel pipettes, or even um, liquid handling robots. The system can dispense from any of these 96 wells into any well of a target plate, which allows to perform even the most complex liquid handling tasks within a minute. And it's compatible with standard plate formats such as 96, 384, or even 1536 well plates. Over the last years, a variety of different protocols for single cell RNA sequencing have been suggested optimization with respect to sensitivity, robustness, and cost effectiveness is still ongoing. And I, I really believe that we will see further improvements of these assays in the next two years. A very popular and well-established protocol is SmartSec2, which was published in 2013 by Simone Picelli and others. In contrast to droplet-based methods, SmartSec allows for full-length transcript sequencing. Here on the right, you see an overview of the individual steps um, of the protocol. Um, this is a figure of the original publication. After cell lysis, the mRNA is converted to cDNA by reverse transcription. The cDNA is then amplified by a PCR, um, then followed by a purification step. And then the method called tagmentation is used to fragment the cDNA and introduce sequencing adapters. Subsequently, each library needs to be barcoded um, with a final PCR. After that, the individual libraries can be pooled and sequenced um, um, as a pool. It has been shown that SmartSec is one of the most sensitive protocols. That's also why it's one of the methods selected by the Human Cell Atlas Initiative, one of the largest initiatives utilizing single cell RNA sequencing to map all sorts of human organs and tissue. Several labs have shown that SmartSec2 libraries can be generated efficiently in 96 and 34 well plates, even at reduced reaction volumes. Often, however, labs do not have access or the appropriate liquid handling equipment and struggle with complex instrumentation for cell isolation. Here you see the entire workflow that we offer to address these challenges starting from the cell sample to the sequencing data. Before I continue, I want to I take the opportunity and pass a question to the audience. So let me briefly start a poll. So the question is, which method are you either using or planning to use? Are you looking into single cell RNA sequencing? 
Are you looking more into multi-omics methods, such as investigating methylation and gene expression in single cells simultaneously? Or are you looking for methods to analyze DNA to look at mutations or copy number variations, or is it other assays that we are looking for? I will wait another 10 seconds before I show you the results of this survey and then we will continue with the slides. All right. So let's share the results. 67% are looking into single cell RNA sequencing, quarter into multi-omics methods, and another one into single cell uh, genome sequencing. Thank you. Let's go back to, this, to the slides. As I mentioned, this is the workflow. I will provide you now uh, with, a, with, with a few details. For this validation study, we used a hex cell line that was diluted to 0.8 million cells per milliliter prior cell isolation with the F site. We then used an F site equipped with the AOC module to dispense the cells into 384 well PCR plates pre filled with one microliter of lysis buffer. All liquid handling steps were then performed with the IDOT low volume liquid handler for the first part of the protocol. We used a commercial version of the SmartSec assay from Takara to generate the cDNA libraries, the SmartSec version 4 kit. And for the second part, the NGS library preparation, we used the Illumina Nextera XT kit. All reactions were performed at tenfold reduced um, volumes. And this slide shows a list of the um, Reactions and their respective volumes, both for the original protocol and for the miniaturized protocol. Cell lysis was performed in 1.05 microliters. And as you can see here, the DF site hardly introduces any additional volume with the cell that is dispensed, um, since the droplets are only 200 picoliters in size. The final PCR to amplify the cDNA was performed in three microliters. And similar, um, the next Terra XT reactions were scaled down. The tegmentation was performed in 2.5 microliters and the final PCR in five microliters. All reagents were dispensed automatically using the IDOT with one IDOT pure, pure plate. And this results really in a tenfold cost reduction for the two most expensive part of the entire protocol. This slide highlights the kind of data that you get from for each individual step. As I mentioned earlier, we obtain images of each individual cell that we isolate with the F site. Here are some examples of hex cells that were dispensed. The F site also allows to dispense an empty droplet from the cell sample for negative controls as depicted in the fourth um, image. After reverse transcription, the cDNA is amplified, resulting in cDNA libraries from single cells as depicted in this fragment size distribution diagram and tagmentation in another PCR to bring in the sequencing adapters results in the final sequencing library that can be seen here on the right. These libraries can be then pooled into a single tube for sequencing. On this slide, you can see more cDNA libraries that we obtained from um, single cells. Uh, it shows nine single cells, then a sample with a pool of 10 cells and a negative control. The results are obtained um, from an Agilent bioanalyzer that we use to determine the fragment length distribution as a quality control. In general, we observed a very consistent cDNA fragment size distribution across the worlds and as you can see, the control without the cell resulted in no cDNA. One thing that you can do 
with the images that we obtain from the assay is to link them to the data generated throughout the assay or the final sequencing data. Here we looked at the cell size as determined by the F-site images versus the cDNA yield after the amplification reaction. And it's quite nice to see that there's indeed a good correlation between cell size and transcript abundance of the hex cells. For the analysis of more heterogeneous samples, this might be a helpful tool to improve uh, potentially the normalization of the clustering. Finally, we pooled 125 cells and sequenced them on an Illumina NextSeq instrument. As you can see here, we obtained high quality sequencing data more than 94% of the reads mapped to the human reference genome, and on average, almost 10,000 genes were detected in each individual cell at um, 1 million reads. This demonstrates nicely that our system can be used to generate high quality sequencing data from single cells. And since the entire protocol is based on 384 well plates, this setup should allow for the preparation of at least 1,000 to 2,000 single cell libraries on a single day if you streamline it. Now I want to take the time to highlight two slightly more complex liquid handling tasks um, and, and how we can efficiently address them with the IDOT. The first one is indexing of NGS libraries and the second one is the normalization of DNA samples. Both are part of the SmartSec protocol um, presented earlier. The ability to index NGS libraries with unique DNA barcodes provides the basis for high throughput sequencing and this especially for single cell sequencing. To efficiently barcode the libraries, dual index schemes are very common as the one depicted um, here. To barcode 96 samples, 12 forward and 8 reverse primers need to be combined such that each library is amplified with a unique combination of barcodes. Miniaturization of this step requires a low volume dispenser and this here is a screenshot of the SA Studio, the software that comes along with the IDOT. It shows an example of how we barcode 96 libraries using the IDOT. On the left, you see the source plate loaded with the 12 forward and 8 reverse primers from the Illumina kit. And on the right, you see um, the 384 well target plate with 96 cDNA um, um, libraries after tagmentation that will be indexed. And a nice feature of the IDOT assay studio is that it allows you to run a simulation prior you actually start the dispensing run. As shown here, the time needed to index. Um, all these uh, to index 96 libraries is, is, is one minute and five seconds. And here we dispensed a volume of um, 500 nanoliters. The whole process can be even faster if we, if we further reduce the, the volumes of the, of the primers dispensed here. Given that up to 96 primers can be loaded onto the IDOT source plate, one can barcode more than 2,300 libraries at once. Obviously, any cross-contamination between the primers has to be avoided since this would make proper demultiplexing impossible. This cannot be achieved with other single multi-channel low-volume dispensing instrument, but is an easy task for the IDOT given that there are 96 wells which um, dispense in a non-contact manner. Yeah. Other example is normalization. To normalize DNA samples such as cDNA libraries, different volumes of buffer and DNA have to dis be dispensed for, for each sample. We did this by loading 96 samples onto an idle pure plate and dispensing those for subsequent quantification. This is commonly done um, with an intercalating dye using a plate imager. Here we used an assay called pickle green at reduced um, volumes. And the results from the plate reader can be automatically translated to a CSV file or an Excel table that can be loaded um, into the IDOT assay studio. Within minutes, the IDOT can be then set up to dispense and normalize 96 um, cDNA libraries in parallel. For setting up the 
the RNA seq flow I presented earlier today, we use a well characterized cell line. Most likely, you're interested in looking at more complex sample samples. And, and this slide highlights that our single cell dispensing technology is really compatible with a wide range of different samples. Here you can see nozzle images generated by the F site from various cell lines, including a CRISPR uh, edited stem cell line but also from primary cells such as hepatocytes, neurons and cells collected from blood samples. For smaller cells such as yeast and bacteria, the b site instrument can be integrated into similar workflow um, as, as, as we can do it with the f site. Today I demonstrated you how we um, established SmartSec2 um, in a similar manner. Other single cell assays can be set up on our platform. For example, we have customers that use our systems for other versions of SmartSec, such as the recently published protocol for SmartSec3. And in a similar manner, other place-based assays can be performed, such as QuadSec, CellSeq, or also multi-omics assays like GNT-Seq. In case you're working with bulk samples or if you use a fax sorting to, to isolate your cells, the IDOT is a great tool to miniaturize the reactions and the library preparation. I'm now almost at the end of today's presentation, so let me, let me summarize the key technical features of our instruments. Using image-based cell detection, the F site allows for efficient deposition of cells into conical PCR wells. You can expect a throughput of two to five minutes for a 96 well plate. It comes with a fluorescent laser to sort cells based on fluorescent markers. And the technology is clearly more gentle to, to the cells and maintain cell viability and integrity compared to, for example, flow cytometry. And you can start with um, sample volumes as low as five microliters. The IDOT is one of the most versatile low volume liquid handler tank technologies out there. It features a low dyed volume of, of less than one microliter, and it allows to load and dispense of up to 96 reagents in parallel. Some protocols such as for example, SmartSec3 utilize glycerol or PEG as, as molecular crowding agents. We have already demonstrated that the IDOT can also dispense this uh, more viscous uh, reagents accurately. Let me also mention that the IDOT is faster than comparable acoustic dispensing technologies and comes, as a, comes actually at a fraction of the price. By combining the two instruments, you can get an affordable and highly flexible platform for single cell omics analysis. The instrumentation is compatible with, with, with any plate-based assays. The workflow is entirely contact-free, um, saving pipette tips, and the single-use cartridges and dispensing plates help to eliminate the risk for cross-contamination uh, between samples. The multiplexing capability of the IDOT allows for rapid sample barcoding or normalization as I showed earlier and both instruments come with a software with an automation API that makes the integration into fully automated um, workflows um, straightforward. We are happy to share our protocols and also to support you in establishing new assays and methods on, 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 on these systems. So how can we come together? We can always set up an individual telecom to discuss your application and your, your needs. After such a telecom, we typically proceed with an on-site demo to introduce you to the instruments and, and also let you work with your essay. Um, given, given the travel restrictions at the moment in large parts of the world, we have now, now set up a live demo room in our labs. So if you are interested, now it's really the chance to get an application-specific live demo that you can watch from, from anywhere. Please get in, touch with, in contact with us. Our team is ready to, to prep such a demo for you, even on a short notice. Now we are at the end of today's presentation. This was the third webinar um, of our Cytina webinar series in April. Um, we will have more webinars on other topics, 
So you can please check out the, the selling website. You cannot only sign up for upcoming webinars, you can also download uh, recordings of past webinars. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm now ready to, to take your questions. Okay, I'm just opening up the questions. So there's a question, how much time uh, is required to, uh, to process a 96 well plate? I guess this addresses the F side for single cell isolation. For 96 well plate, it takes typically two to five minutes. And for a 380 well played um, between the 10 and 15 minutes. There's another question uh, regarding time and also regarding whether we can detect irregular cell types or shapes. So, so we really use bright field image images to detect our cells along with the with the fluorescent images so that lets us to lets us retrieve the the cell morphology um, from, from these images and we use parameters such as size roundness along with the fluorescent intensity um, to to sort the cells so we can we can also um, target cells that are for example elongated and only sort those into the plates what harder the ones that are nice and round. So that yes, that's possible. Is it possible to miniaturize the SA more than tenfold? That's a very good question. Um, yes, that's possible. And um, we have only worked with a tenfold um, um, reduction um, for this validation study, but it's 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 possible to further downscale this. There is publications that show that the data quality is can be maintained and our instruments are clearly capable of doing this. So the iDOT can dispense um, way lower um, liquid volumes. You however want to make sure that you after you, you generated your libraries you can still handle them and there's sufficient material to purify and pool the libraries. How does the instruments integrate with liquid handlers? Um, as I mentioned at the end of the presentation, both instruments come with an automation API. So they can be integrated into automated workflows using, for example, plate handling robots. And the iDOT can be, can be really integrated nicely with standard pipetting robots since both the target and the source well plate are standard SVS format. And using normal pipettes or pipe handling robots, you can add your reagents into the source well plate in an automated manner. So we actually have customers that have integrated the instruments into a fully automated workflow with pipe handling robots and plate handlers. There's another question. I'm working with nuclei. Can I use the F site to isolate them? Um, yes, absolutely. We have um, worked with nuclei extracted from mouse tissue on our instruments. Since they're typically around five micrometer in size, they can be um, detected nicely by the F site um, and isolated in a similar manner as you would do it for um, intact cells. I think I addressed most of the questions. Um, if you have further questions, um, we are happy to get in touch with you. Please um, shoot us an email or visit us on our website. Um, and with that, I want to thank you again for joining the webinar and I wish you uh, a great rest of the day. <laughs>